Floating Heat Wave. My name is Brian Belcher, and I'm joined by Chris It's the Hutch Hutcherson. Hi there. Jairus Mitchell. Uh, buongiorno. And Brittany Saturn. Hey, everybody. This is a kitchen sink of a podcast. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word kitchen sink there for this a second. Is a, this is a garbage uh, can of a podcast. podcast. <laughs> this is a thing that you listen to with your ears. And uh, uh, it's, it's kind of about video games, too. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyways, let's just go ahead and jump into our first subject. Jairus. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. YouTube asks you to do a lot of things for you to be able to see our content, and that means we're going to ask you to do a lot of things to see our content. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and it helps out a whole lot if you hit that bell. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Nice catch. Brian, who drops his phone? (laughs) (laughs) What do you drink in the bathtub? So I, uh, I'm probably, I don't know. I feel like I'm the one that takes the most baths in this uh, group. Probably, yeah. Yeah, let's chart our bath frequency. Uh, <laughs> I, I take uh, a bath just about every day. He does oh, take a lot okay. of baths. And uh, is that a relaxation bath or a cleaning bath? Both. Mostly, okay. mostly relaxation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get clean while I'm in there, and then yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what do you drink when you're in the bathtub? Uh, Pepsi. Pepsi? <laughs> Pepsi. Do yeah. you put ice, like, you're not normally a person who puts ice in your cup. No, you put no. ice in when so you I can, I, I get a fresh, cold can of Pepsi, mm-hmm. right, like, I'm about to get in the water, I'm naked, I'm walking through the house, yeah. and I grab a Pepsi and then I go get in the water. Mm. Like, it's, the, the, the contrast of hot water to cold Pepsi makes it even better. Mm. So my favorite thing too is that he'll drink half of it mm-hmm. and then leave the can in the bathroom <laughs> every time, every <laughs> single then time. I'll be like, I'm not gonna pick that up. He he needs to pick up his can, but then the next day there's another can beside <laughs> the first can, and I'm eventually like, okay, I guess I'll fucking take these cans to the kitchen. <laughs> I, so he's like a bath slug, <laughs> yeah. where he just you know him. Like where there was one empty Pepsi can, that was where yeah, he carried it's you. It's the broken window <laughs> theory. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave one Pepsi can, more will come. Have you guys? It's filled if up you a- give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> Have you guys filled up a kitchen sink with Pepsi cans yet? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and- for sure. Some things never change. Yeah, well, I, have, I, have a, I have a recycling <laughs> yeah, bin. Yeah, we have but- a recycling bin specifically for all of his cans, but he still is like. <laughs> I'm going to leave them in the sink. This episode yeah. is not brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pepsi, you owe us $5 now. <laughs> I'm going to send out invoices to these companies. <laughs> making notes of who we're mentioning. So be careful that they will pay it. And then we'll go to jail. Yeah. Remember that mm-hmm. guy? Because there was like, a guy who kept sending, who was it, Google? Yeah, Google He kept sending invoices. Google invoices, and they were like really small amounts, and Google didn't know what they were for, but they just kept paying them. Yeah. And he ended up getting like, I can't remember. $64,000. It was, yeah, it was a ridiculous amount of money, and then he went to jail because Google was like, hey, give him my money back. <laughs> hey, we just realized that we paid you $64,000. I don't see how that should be. I don't that's think he should fault. go to jail because yeah. like that's Google's fault for not yeah. knowing like who they're paying. Right, but that would be that would be fun. Is if he put like what the what the like in the memo line mm. for using my personal information. <laughs> I am charging you two hundred dollars. Yeah, and then just sent one every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or it could be like what we're doing right here. Is like I talked about you in my podcast. Yeah, yeah. you know, advertising fee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like, like some sort of. Implied consent with payment. Uh huh. Uh huh. You are by paying this, you agree that this is a reasonable thing to pay me for. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Hutch, how frequently do you take that? <laughs> Not a lot. You, you have such you, a nice tub. Though. Yeah, I was just about yeah. to say, as a person who has the nicest tub here, you don't take baths. Yeah, and it's f- until like the past week, it's been filled with boxes and like <laughs> cap- like airbags from packaging. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just like a little nest. <laughs> I, I I have weird bath habits. That's that's how he gets comfortable. Is he curls up in that? I like to feel like I'm on a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> cloud of packaging. Yes. Um, but uh, anyway, so I would go the soda route as well. 
good, nice ice cold Mountain Dew. Um, but if I wanted to go fancy, I would go for a George Ocean on ice <laughs> with some Irish cream. With some milk. <laughs> With some milk in that. Ding to a previous uh, <laughs> food club or booze club. Well, this no. is also going out as a podcast, so why, uh, look no. in the look in the notes or comments or on the video. <laughs> yeah, there's something in there. Mm-hmm. Trying not to complicate everything. Yeah, <laughs> by just saying ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs> I'm so used to YouTube. I can't imagine drinking a Mountain Dew in the bathtub. I just want to play Counter Strike. <laughs> but then you're in the bathtub and you can't play counter. Well, no, that's bathtub. not true. They have those like wooden plank boards now oh, that you go yeah, across yeah, there, yeah. and you just play Counter Strike. Uh, uh, put your laptop yeah. on there. I want to mount a what? TV in my bathroom while I'm revving my house and just start haloing in the bathtub. Sounds like a great idea. Thank you, Jerris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have been talking about making a waterproof controller. Pooping and yeah. haloing. <laughs> that would be a weird, weird stream. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and it would be short lived. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're caught. arrested. <laughs> Most disturbing stream. Okay, Brittany, what, what drink would you drink in a bathtub? So I take baths not as frequently as Brian, but I do, I would say maybe like two to three a week. Okay. Um, and I do it at night as a, for a sort of relaxation because mm-hmm. I like to take showers in the morning before work. Yeah. Um, but I have drank wine in the bathtub before. Yeah. Mm. Um, as long as it's in a glass so that I can break it in the tub and cut myself. No bags for you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of wine do you usually drink? Uh, probably like a Moscato. Okay. I think that's what I normally a drink. Nice fresh. A nice fresh Moscato. <laughs> Gotta get but that sweet if I had drink. to drink like another drink, it would definitely be alcohol because um, you know, whatever. I like to party. Trying to relax. Trying yeah. to relax. Um, mm-hmm. it would be something like really mm-hmm. silly and really fruity, like a sex on the beach or something like mm-hmm. that. Like a pina colada. Any sort of tropical Yeah. Trick my brain into thinking I'm in vacation, like in Hawaii right. with the warm water, but I'm just in my crappy bathtub. <laughs> I would probably take more baths if our bathtub was better. Yeah, our, our bathtub, bathtub here is, is really not bad. Great. It's like even worse than like the bathtub that we used at your house when we lived It's with like you. you can't lay down. Your neck is like at yeah. ninety like, degree angle. You have to be a contortionist. <laughs> I didn't realize how shallow that thing was until today when I looked at it. I was like, because ne- I'm never in that bathroom. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty shallow. I'm never in that bathroom. I'm never in it. <laughs> It's so. It's a foreign part of my house. I. <laughs> I like that you're painting this image that you live in a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> and not, and you don't walk by that bathroom to get anywhere in your house. The 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 uh, the doorway is basically the DMZ. Of- you know, <laughs> I've only I've only ever seen you in that bathroom one time. That's when uh, uh, Jungle Boy was shaving my face for me. Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> so I was in there today. Oh, good okay, mm. but yeah, bathrooms are fun. For, for me, I um, probably bathe less frequently or bath less frequently than the two of you, but more frequently than Hutch. Okay, um, yeah, and usually it's a night relaxation thing. So either a reasonably priced beer or um, like a little whiskey. Okay. Nice. Is there? Uh, I'm I'm kind of curious. Like, where did you go? Like, why did you come to this question, though? Like, what was your inspiration to be like? I want to know what all my friends drink when they're in the tub. Well, I think it's a good question because okay. it's like there's a lot wrapped up in there. It's a there's... lot better than what's your favorite color, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, one there's you know how frequently do you take a bath? Yeah, not not bathe. I'm not implying that you're dirty humans, but like showers or functional things baths are more typically a thing that you do to relax or settle or something yeah. like that mm. um and then trying to figure out what your sort of relaxation patterns are like do you read a book like you just are sitting in a bathtub drinking half a can of pepsi i, I actually watch youtube videos while i'm in there too because yeah. my phone's like waterproof now so i just sit it up there i watch mm. youtube videos and like like Nine times out of ten, I'm hot all over, hmm. but my feet are freezing. So I go in there and I, uh, I like I, I like to warm up my feet before I go to bed. Okay, mm. 
Yeah, I'll take a bath too because Brian wants it fucking cold as hell in the house. And yeah. I'll just be shivering at my desk like, holy <laughs> fuck, I'm cold. And there's a sort of coldness that like, even if you get under covers, it's like down on the bone and you just can't get warm. It yeah. takes a while to so, defrost. Yeah, I'll get in the bathtub So you got to use soggy cool. hot water to yeah, kind of definitely swamp you up. But um, another thing I want to mention is like I remember as a kid like drinking um, like really cold juice in the bathtub and then the mixture of the cold juice and the hot tub would make me sick. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Especially if it was like something heavy like grape juice. Mm. And I remember (laughs) throwing up all the time. I would like chug grape juice (laughs) and then throw up. (laughs) So this is like the opposite of like. I I, pref- I really enjoy so that experience. I, I prefer, like, my drink can be chilled, but it doesn't, it can't be, like, super duper cold because okay. of the heat of the water. I don't mm-hmm. know, it makes me not feel good at all. I love it. It makes my stomach, like, churn. Okay. It's kind of like the eating before swimming sort of thing. Yes, you're yeah. not, you have to wait 45 <laughs> minutes before you can take a bath. Take a bath, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take a bath. I just drink some juice. <laughs> Imagine, imagine you're like, it was one of the heavier juices. <laughs> imagine you're like you just sink five right to the years bottom. old and your mom's like, okay, time for a bath. And you're like, sorry, mom, I have to wait 45 minutes. <laughs> that's a good cop out, though. I like that. Yeah, that's for you kids at home. That's a good excuse for you. <laughs> Do uh, you guys got any uh, like bath rituals, like bath bombing, or oh, maybe so some Avon you, bubble bath? So Brittany and I, uh, Brittany is introduced me to bath bombs about yeah. a year ago now, and that is absolutely one of my favorite things to do. We have a lot of like sugar scrubs and uh, various other bath things that are like for just keeping you calm. And while I know this does absolutely nothing, I really enjoy scented Epsom salt. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like that too. It's, uh, mm. It just feels like it feels like um, the water is lighter. Yeah, and it just. You know, if I have something that smells good, I don't smell good most of the time. <laughs> so, so it's like one of those few times it's just like, oh, wow, this is really, really smells good. Aromatherapy kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I'll mm. buy all those things. I'll get like the Epsom salts, bubble baths, mm-hmm. um, sugar scrubs, bath And I bombs. use them all. Yeah, sometimes Brian gives me shit for it. And then I'll go in the bathroom and that thing will be empty or almost <laughs> gone. And I'm like, okay, I guess you did enjoy it then. Yeah. I When I used to do more physical labor for my work and my job, um, I became a large, like a big fan of Epsom salts. Mm-hmm. And the, like the next path, like Epsom salts are a gateway to bath bombs. And yeah. And... Like that, that very clean line is the scented Epsom salt. Yeah. Um, when me and lady friend were in Japan, we actually went to this hobby store called Tokyo Hands. Um, Tokyo Hands. And it's like five stories and it's shit for every hobby in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but Japan is interesting in that everything could be regarded <clears throat> as a hobby. Okay. So imagine walking into a section that's full of bath salts. Yeah. But, like, hobbyist bath salts? This is reminding <laughs> me of, like, a weird Florida conversation, but go on. A weird Florida conversation? Yeah, because of the people that got high off bath salts? Yes. Yeah, it wasn't, well... It's like, that's a weird way to have a hobby. Those were... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to eat people's faces. Salts, they were just called bath salts, and yeah. it was a drug. I know, I know. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm trying to make a yeah. bad joke. So we got we got a lot of really interesting bath salts okay uh and we're almost out of them now that's good so if you're in japan and send me bath salts i will appreciate it we don't have a p.o box yet but if we do by the time this episode goes out i'll put it out right here on the screen and in the <laughs> notes and whatnot <laughs> p.o box send us things <laughs> p.o yep. box 69 420 god if they have that number i'm taking it <laughs> <laughs> they let you pick the numbers yes yeah. I don't, they're not gonna have that. I know. You gotta slip them an extra fiver. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay them a little extra. <laughs> like if there was a 69 or a 666 or all of the above, I'll take them. 420, bro. Yeah. Or 1337. Ooh. Ooh. So every day, every day oh when gosh. we go to work, every <laughs> single day, um, if we end up getting breakfast, we get breakfast at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And the, the receipt has our order number on it. And we're usually about 10 or 15 away from leet. 
mm. on there. So have you started shifting the time you leave? Uh, no, no. I just uh, I haven't I haven't attempted, but I've gotten leet twice now, mm. and uh, I have both receipts nailed to my wall at work. <laughs> <laughs> I just put a little thumbtack really... into it. And I'm just like that was my leet it's day. So Basically, the geek I was lottery. Hoping it was like a full like wood nail, and you were just like, Tush. oh god, that'd be great. No, just but yeah, so. I keep that for some reason. I don't know why. Wow. You're really sad, Brian, but... You... you <laughs> sit- <laughs> Look at his face. He was so offended. <laughs> I am offended. He was, like, quickly trying to think of uh, something to, like... <laughs> excuse me. I will not take that from you. But if I, if I didn't drink Pepsi, it'd probably be, like, a tequila sunrise, which is my favorite alcoholic drink. But then that's cold orange juice in the bathtub. Well, I don't have the Britney he problem where I problem vomit I have, over no. juice. I just throw up over everything. Just throw it up in a <laughs> just bathtub. Just constantly disgusting. If, if I was throwing up, it's pretty because of too much tequila. <laughs> throwing up in a bathtub is, like, a, an image. I don't think I've ever done that before. I had, in high school, I had a friend who got so drunk, we had to put him in the bathtub and... He just kind of vomited on himself. And oh, yeah. We turned on, like, the... The, the shower head? Shower head was one of the, the wand ones. Mm. So we just, like, took that and hosed him off. Oh, convenient. <laughs> well, with that... <sighs> Bye! That, that's the end of our segment. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody! See ya. Bye! You got the social medias, we got the social medias. You got the Facebooks, we got the Facebooks. You got the Twitters, we got the Tweeters. We got the uh, Instagrams, we don't really use that one too much, but you know, we're on there too. If there's something else, we probably got it. You can find them all in the description at the bottom. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Brittany, and today we're going to talk about which Pokemon fuck. (laughs) So, I've got these condoms here. I'm so excited. I'm going to pass them down. Everyone take one. Um, Okay. Pass it down. Because I don't want... And, and use it? I don't want anyone getting <laughs> pregnant on this show. <laughs> it's very considerate of you. So we're going to pass these out to everybody Thanks. while we talk about this. I haven't um, looked at a condom in a long time. So I also want to <laughs> specify, when we talk about Pokemon, like, which Pokemon fuck, it's not it's not which Pokemon you personally want to fuck. Because we all and know the not, answer is Mr. Mind. Yes, of course. <laughs> and it's also not like, ooh, which Pokemon is like... It's it's like an attitude, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like which like you know you get it, you guys get it. <laughs> you guys fuck right. You know which Pokemon fuck. That Pokemon or so that fuck. I, I went Got through it, yeah. and so also I should specify we're only talking about the first generation, the first 151 because there's like I don't know, there's like a thousand Pokemon now or something. And 95 percent of them are bullshit or and, like a yeah. scoop of ice cream. Yeah. And even <laughs> Pokemon has fucking gave up on that. They and don't even guys, include them all. And if you guys like the segment, we can go through the others, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments if you like this. Know. If you'd like us if you to do the second generation, other, other Pokemon that would fuck. So, but we're just going to the first one. So I made a list. Um, I went through this morning and made like a big long list of ones I am that I think. Very curious as to what the Pokemon, the first Pokemon on that list is. <laughs> but before we get into that, I wanted to just ask you guys off the top of your head if I asked you which Pokemon fuck, which one would you pick? Squirtle. 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 Mm. Just because of squirting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Hitmonchamp. I, I'm i with you on Hitmonchamp. Hitmonchamp fucks. Yeah. Okay. Just look at him. Do you see his face? Do you see those giant eyebrows? He's ready to... He's just... He slicked both those eyebrows and then walked in the room. <laughs> he knew. So, I had... Um, let's see. I don't have Hitmonchamp. Okay. I have Hitmon Lee on there. Okay. okay. And the reason why that is is because, legs. is because I was reading through the Pokemon Wikipedia and I was reading about the biology of each Pokemon. Okay. Um and well, you how thorough does that get, Brittany? <laughs> Pretty thorough. And the reason why I picked Hitmon Lee is because they wrote that he is limber and reckless. Oh. Mm. Oh. And him on Champ was none of those things, and it, it felt he more. Is not limber. It, it felt more like him on Champ had like his shit together. Like he was just very like very focused on like yeah. boxing, and that's all he cared about. But oh, him on Lee okay. would like take a break from boxing to like fuck a little bit. So yeah. that's why I think like him on Lee okay. versus him okay. on Champ. Okay, I get there. I'm on board. Okay. I'm on board. Should I? Um, should I kind of go through oh, my please, list now? Please, we just, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, so the first one... I, um, now I also want to hear your criteria for why you say that. Yeah, well, I have reasonings for, okay, for good, a lot of good, them. Good, good, so. Wow. Wonderful. I think we're just on for a ride for this one. I, I'm, I'm buckled up. Buckle okay. up. All right, so the first one I looked at was Venusaur. Okay. And just something with flowers. It's like yeah. very Giorgio O'Keefe. Giorgio O'Keefe like vagina. Like we got this flower blooming. Yeah. And this mm. particular one, apparently it has a flower that blooms on its head and its rear, it said, oh. that like opens up. Yeah. I was like, wow, Eiffel that's, Tower. that's pretty, pretty special <laughs> yeah. right yeah. there. So... <laughs> So, to, um, if you guys are listening to this podcast, if you're watching the podcast, we're going to put the uh, the a picture of each one of these Pokemon on the screen. Up? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, awesome. do we need to they can hold on? That. Do we need to call that out, or can we just do it? Oh, well, this time I did <clears throat> call it out, but okay. I'm just letting podcast users know okay. that there's visuals. Um. Unless Consume just, our media in all forms. Unless you just know these Pokemon from memory. Yeah. I don't. Close okay. your eyes and visualize the pokes. <laughs> I'm visualizing a Pokemon with a flower pussy. So, <laughs> then you're correct. Because <laughs> that's what it was. Ding, ding, ding. So the second one that I have was Squirtle, but only the leader, squad? leader of the Squirtle yeah. squad with the pointed sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, not yeah. not the ones with the rounded sunglasses, but just that one yeah. particular uh, leader. There's that a Squirtle, Squirtle squad? Yeah, that one Squirtle. I, I'm clearly not a Pokemon master. So there is a Squirtle squad and they all wear sunglasses. And then eventually uh, they start out as criminals and then they become firefighters. And the that leader, sounds weirdly and familiar, the, actually. And the leader has like these pointed. Oh, that's like, not going to be good. <laughs> oh no! Brian, please. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to. It's going to hinder anything. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's. Everyone's protected from you your garbage. You have to deal with that smell. <laughs> you have to deal with the smell. These are only fifty cents. Of of a, a foam. <laughs> Explosive. I'm going to defender. replace this foam. My fingers, though, are weird. I haven't messed with a condom in a long Brent's time. I just like playing with a condom. <laughs> for those of you just listening, he's welcome to toddlers. We've got an instructional video for you after the podcast, Brian. <laughs> oh, here oh, we no. go. <laughs> here we go. He's we've, blowing it we've up. We've totally. Um, keep talking about. Keep talking about. Yeah, please, right. please go. Uh, the next one, you might find surprising Metapod. Because he looks like he's been in someone's asshole. Like, for sure, he looks like someone's asshole. Yeah, I love that I would, because Hutch is probably like, I don't know. I don't I fucking know what it looks like. I would pick like. Metapod first if the prompt was, which Pokemon would you use as a butt plug? Mm-hmm. Um, but then it would be <laughs> Metapod and then Diglett. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dig- Diglett. Okay, I do know Diglett. Diglett's yeah, definitely Diglett. been in some assholes. So, uh, I didn't put Diglett on here, but I definitely put uh, the Doug Trio yeah. on there. Because of that, yeah, that uh, fan cartoon that's three muscular boys hugging each so, other. So if you have not seen that, go to www.google.com <laughs> and type in bodybuilder Doug Trio, uh, and there is a if you lot. want to append XXX to that, I'm oh. sure it might. <laughs> it gets that way without with, yeah. Yeah, without the XXX. Um, the next one is uh, Nido Queen. Hmm. Uh, she's got like the weird breastplate thing going yeah. on, and she's like just a queen. Like she just seems like yeah, she she mm-hmm. fucks, she fucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you chose to invite that into yeah, your life. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you let him touch you. <laughs> yeah, you can't there, do anything with a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Golbat. Constantly, just like his mouth is open. Apparently, he just like sucks constantly and engorges himself on. Well, it's supposed to be people's blood, but I feel like mm. the vampirism kind of goes hand it's in hand. It's very sexual. Yeah. 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 Definitely. My mouth um, tastes like lube. Yeah, because you put your mouth on the condom. <laughs> now he's all hopped up on lube. I'm all... Speaking of mouthful of lube, have you guys seen Gloom lately? <laughs> Gloom. <laughs> Gloom looks what? like it looks has like a like hentai kind of like, like drippy thing. It has like an STD on its head. It's like I got a mushroom up there, mm. and then oh, uh, yeah. it's like constantly drooling. And the Pokemon Wikipedia said it was a sweet, sticky nectar that constantly drips from its mouth. <laughs> Lovely. Also, like Gloom is fucking a little too much that's, but <laughs> yeah that's a that's a hentai thing yeah. and then i already mentioned doug trio uh primate 
Um, only specifically because Primeape uh, gets mad really fast and rages, and apparently all the blood rushes. Uh, it said it's like blood vessels like constrict because there's like so much blood. Uh, so I thought he definitely gets a rage boner. Mm. Like, for oh sure. yeah, no, you know oh, that would be a nightmare. He definitely gets. You're a rage in Pokemon boner. Stadium all of a sudden. <sighs> Primate comes at you with a rage burner. Um, it's super effective. Dodge it, Pikachu. <laughs> Polyrath, <laughs> because he's made out of pure muscle, and he's a good swimmer. Like mm. he can swim really fast. Yeah, yeah. I just like just the muscly, like yeah, giant blue boy. <laughs> <laughs> by the way this got really weird this morning when i was just going through every single pokemon like pokemon fuck like yeah it does uh these i feel like these two are obvious choices but both uh machoke and machamp mm. yeah yeah both of those right choke me the, yeah, yeah i was like machoke me daddy sort of, sort of like yeah. thing going on there uh weeping bell Okay. Which just looks like a flashlight. Yeah. You yeah. could just like face fuck it. <laughs> um <clears throat> Tentacruel. Yeah. Cause we've all seen enough hentai to know where all those tentacles are going. Yeah. And I feel like even though it's a jellyfish, there'd be some weird hentai that's like, oh, you're getting stung, but you kinda like it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just not like excruciating Aye. pain that it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um It's a gentle electricity. <laughs> Slowpoke already in the position (laughs) (laughs) already ready to go (laughs) that's just this natural habitat face down that's the way I like to slow poke yeah exactly Um, shelter Uh, is that that the one with the horns no that's the one that looks like a clam and it has a tongue sticking out oh yeah oh yeah yeah. it's basically like yeah yeah. that's a very inviting face for sure Mm-hmm. And then its evolution, uh, I would also say the cloister. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one that if you want to know where the clit is, you just look at that Pokemon. And uh. you just see it's, it's right there. It's right above its little face. <laughs> I love that you just stick a little bit of educational value I'm into. Trying to help people do here. Um, well, electrode. Listen, hip nerds, <laughs> if you want to find the clitoris, <laughs> look at the cloister. <laughs> Uh, electrode has definitely been in someone's like somewhere yeah it's just a ball and it has like that weird grin on its face too like yeah yeah like my girlfriend my girlfriend's parents are out of town and she gave me the green light for anal (laughs) like that's the like smirk he has so definitely electrode um i mentioned him only because he's limber uh lick tongue oh yeah Mm -hmm. for sure uh, I found a lot of porn of that one this morning. Well, I because I was like, that was just obvious. I'm like, let me just Google like how much of it was actually Pokemon related. Oh, all of it. Okay, 100%. that was the worst part about the Detective Pikachu movie. What when, was when he was uh, getting licked by that licky tongue on the train to town? Yeah, that was the grossest part of the whole film for me. <laughs> well, imagine that it's sexy now. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of drawn animation of some stuff this morning. Mm, okay, if you guys are. Interested. Was it with Pokemon trainers yes. or other Pokemon or both? both. Okay, both. <clears throat> um, <laughs> all right, we're getting towards the end here. Uh, Tangela. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, tentacles just looks like a pile of pubic hair yeah also apparently i read that those uh like vines come out and tickle you mm-hmm. like that's what it was listed yeah. as is one of its defenses Your prostate. it's like we're just gonna like <laughs> tickle you. right very targeted um jinx which is like the oh, pokemon yeah, yeah. that's yeah. got the blonde hair wearing the dress yeah black face oh yeah yeah the, the racist is the racist slightly one. changed uh, to dark purple. purple now yeah oh uh, there's something about magmar that always made me think that he had like a pair of tits on his head, just the way the flames are drawn. Is it the spicy duck? Yeah, he's kind of kind of like a spicy duck. Yeah, okay. he's like a like a lava type. Yeah, but he has like a weird like these two flames coming out, and they just look, kind of look like titties. Look like titties on top okay. of his head. I don't know. I've always okay. thought thought that one. Um, so this one I have a question mark beside uh, Ditto. What do you guys think about Ditto? Because I mean, Ditto could technically change into anything. I, I mm. believe that Ditto is probably down for down to clown mm-hmm. to <laughs> some degree, but like consent. Mm. 
Well, and then we get into can Ditto look like people? Oh I yeah, well, can. based on the movie, you can. Yeah, yeah. Detective Pikachu. Mm. So like, but he had to wear but he had those glasses on. Otherwise, yeah. oh man. <laughs> so you could fuck yourself. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Someone, yeah. uh, someone's got that fetish. So. Uh, I think of Ditto as being like kind of a a mirror mm. to reflect whatever weird shit you're trying to get down on. Yeah. So I imagine it would, but I think there might be consent issues. Because I don't know if a Pokemon can legally consent. I don't know. What do you think, Brittany? Do you think a Pokemon could consent? I think it would depend on the Pokemon. Mm. Depend on their intelligence level. (laughs) (laughs) And then the last one, which is, I feel pretty obvious, Mewtwo. Yeah. Yeah. For Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, Mewtwo. He's one of those, like, um, sexually aggressive ones, Mm -hmm. but in a way that's, like, consoling. Like it, like it's like if you're with someone who is actively actively trying to come at you, but to a point where they're like, "But I'm going to get right to where I need your consent before I move forward." Mm. They're just like right before there, like, "Okay, we're here." So you know what I want? That Mewtwo has like animalistic sexual tension. Yes, mm. yes, yeah. but he but w- with enough intelligence to make sure that it's okay. Yeah. Mm. He's going to rub your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what that implies, but. Like aftercare? Like, like yeah, before. Yeah. Before care. Huh? Before like, care and aftercare. Like, <clears throat> like Primeape's going to make sure that you can't walk afterwards. Yeah, definitely. But like, doesn't care about your feelings and will fall asleep immediately. Exactly. After. Exactly. Mewtwo's going to bring you a glass of orange juice <laughs> just to get your electrolytes back up. That's right. <laughs> So yeah, that's my list of the personal Pokemon that I think fuck. Yeah. Is there is there any more that you guys want to add? Much. <laughs> I know, actually, very quiet and uncomfortable. I, I, I'm not a Pokemon master, like I said. More of a Digimon. Well, no, actually, I'm not even. That. <laughs> <laughs> Next time when more, we well, which out Digimon which would you fuck then? I actually, wait, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't play any of these games. Hey, he needs to do his research, and he can do that. On the next segment because Ooh. it just hit just hit there. Ooh. Good job, Brittany. Yay. No one got pregnant, right? Maybe I mean uh, I blew Except for Brian, I, maybe. Uh, I probably got pregnant. I need a test. Find <laughs> <laughs> you something to go pee on. The yeah. next segment, Hutch is pissing on a pregnancy test. <laughs> This is the worst timeline. <laughs> that would, that would be fun. Bye. 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 Want to see us perform live? Use that big brand of yours and follow us on Twitch. We do things live there sometimes. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Hutch, and we are going to talk about milkshakes, specifically cookout milkshakes. Uh, Brittany, uh, uh, Brittany, what milkshake brings you to the yard? God damn it, that was the joke I was... I know, that's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it's your own damn fault for letting me. I should have listened to you. You can feel it in his excited movement on the couch. Like, <laughs> he was sitting up like, I want to make a joke. It's like... Guys, I've got one. 15, I've got a funny. It's 15 years old now. I'm going to make a joke. <laughs> Kel should be proud. Who? Yeah, I know the artist who did the song. Her name's Kellis. No, her name is Kalise. Carl Ooh, Jr. clap back. <laughs> I don't think it's pronounced that way. I've always heard it pronounced Kalise, but... Take it to the goobs. Kellis? Ooh. Yeah, she was dating Nas at the time. Well, let's call Today- him Nas and ask him. <laughs> you mean Big Nas Y? <laughs> yes, Big Nas Y. <laughs> He's going to get on that uh, little town road. Mm. All right, Bra- Brian, we- tell me about your milkshake. <laughs> okay. From so, cookout. So cookout. They have a choice of like forty what flavors? It's forty like forty one or something mm-hmm. like that. But here's the thing that I learned when I moved to Raleigh. I think you told me this. You can choose up to three different flavors to put into a milkshake. Yep. So mine is an Oreo milkshake mm-hmm. with butterfinger pieces nice. and heath toffee pieces. That sounds really good. And I that is my that's my go to milkshake. I have other ones. I like uh the there's a banana pudding one and I like to put cheesecake bits into it. Hell yeah. And then I also every now and then I'll get just a chocolate milkshake with um 
with like every candy bar in it, mm-hmm. like basically Reese's Pieces, Butterfingers, any, and I'll just whichever one I'm feeling at the time. But my go-to is Oreos, Butterfingers, Heath Toffee. Nice. I used to love Butterfinger, but it's like I can't get over like it keeps getting stuck in your teeth. Have so. you tried it? The new recipe? They came up with a new recipe no. like last year. Yeah. And it's that it's next to never less, happens. It's made with less fiberglass. Yep. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Easier to eat. <laughs> Wonderful. It, it is easier to eat. It doesn't hurt your teeth as much and it doesn't stick nearly as bad. I'm going to have to try this out now. It's I really good. I like wow. the new. I like the new Butterfinger. Brittany knows because I, I destroyed. I miss those like Butterfinger BBs. Oh, those are so good. Those are really good. Those yeah, are a really easy way to eat Butterfingers. Bart Simpson would advertise the shit out of those. Yeah, those mm-hmm. are really good. Don't lay a finger on my Butterfinger BBs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brittany, tell my me about your go-to milkshake. Is the Oreo mint? I think I love mint ice cream, but I'm not a fan of the chocolate bits and the mint, if that makes sense, because they're always semi sweet and I only Mm. like milk chocolate. So I like to get the Oreo instead. So I do the Oreo mint. Um, If I want something like uh, peanut buttery, I do like to get the chocolate fudge and mix that with the Reese's cups as well. Mm. It's pretty good. Very and then, nice. obviously, in the summer, in July, you got to get the watermelon milkshake. Because uh, yeah. it's seasonal. It only comes out in July. I don't think I've ever actually had one of the watermelons. It's watermelon. so good. It's better than what you think it would be. Because yeah. it's literally just a vanilla milkshake with pieces of watermelon in it. Mm. And huh. you think that probably isn't good or <laughs> isn't a good idea. But it really is. It's really awesome. You, you, so, speaking of seasonal... So, since we're in December, uh, technically right now, where's the recording? Eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> eggnog is. Let's ruin those dates. They're good. Well, <laughs> we can edit that out. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, it, Brian hates editing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So, in December, uh, <laughs> cookout. Uh, why are you laughing at me? Stop it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very subtle bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so December they have eggnog uh, uh, milkshakes. I don't think I've actually had one of their eggnog milkshakes. They have a new egg. eggnog it's milkshake good. too. I like the eggnog milkshake. It's just, it's like when you drink eggnog, you're like, fuck yeah, eggnog. I'm going to get a big carton of it. Mm. And then you drink like that much of it and you're like, oh God. Oh yeah. Oh, the eggnog milkshake is kind of like that. Oh, okay. And it's worse now. This This past year they had a new flavor. Chocolate eggnog milkshake. What? That sounds like a crime. It was a crime. <laughs> I have to have it in my body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, they have a new one and it is rich. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, one of my wait. things, like when I get a, a milkshake from Cookout, I want like chunks of stuff in it. Yeah. yeah. I don't ever want to get anything that's just like a solid like flavor of mm-hmm. just smoothness. I need the chunky bits. Yeah. So Mine's, my go to is usually a strawberry cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, that's a great one. And I'm a, a big fan of that. Um, my other is like an off the shelf, but it's the banana pudding. And yeah. if you haven't had the banana pudding milkshake, it's, it's I haven't. I need, I need to have it. It is yeah. absolutely one of the best, like, basic flavor ones that they have. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's got like crumbly Nilla wafer bits. Really? I don't think I've ever had the banana pudding one. Oh, it's hella There's good. a lot, though, that I haven't had because I constantly go and just buy the same things because mm-hmm. I'm like, that was so good. I don't want to, like... You get a quesadilla just... tray with two quesadillas as the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I get that. Just like my queso. chicken tenders tray with chicken uh, nuggets and a chicken quesadilla. Mm-hmm. Chick me up inside. I've asked for a chicken milkshake. I'm sure they'll do it <laughs> if I ask. Oh, God. Um, yes, sir. Please wait. It's going to take a little extra time. And then you pull up, and then the cops come. <laughs> and you're like, did I do anything wrong? And they're like, no, we're just worried about you. <laughs> We're concerned about what you might do, both to yourself and the world. <laughs> Chicken milkshake sounds terrible. Yeah, that sounds like that. I I tried doing um a like chicken uh puree when I was having throat issues before. Yeah, and tried to drink it. It's off putting as hell, oh, yeah. man. So my pops used to like manage kitchens for retirement homes. 
And one of the things that they'll do is they'll make easier to eat and digest things where essentially they make a chicken puree Mm -hmm. and then let it cool in a silicon mold. So it still kind of looks like chicken, Uh but it's just chicken mush. Yeah, that's bad. I feel like I've had breaded chicken mush before at like high school. Probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's essentially how they make a lot of the nugs. Cafeteria Mm -hmm. type Mm -hmm. food. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll bring it back to some, some, uh, g- good food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my go-to, uh, mix and milkshake is Oreo, um, with Reese's Pieces. Um, and uh, I used to put it brownie in, mm-hmm. but brownie's good, but do they, do they still have it? Cause I don't think they have many. They got rid of excessive. They got rid of brownies and they got rid of red velvet cake. Mm. I never had Did the red velvet, velvet cake when they had it. They had red velvet cake with their cheesecake. Damn. It was really good, but it was also... It was, like, really good for a third of the milkshake. And then the rest of the time, you're like, it's just, like, too much. Just a mm. slice of cake in your yeah, milkshake. It's just a fucking <laughs> slice just of cake in your <laughs> they milkshake. They just shove, like, a slice of cake in the, and then dump ice cream on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah, you go, that's... tubby. You <laughs> <laughs> can throw it at you. <laughs> Here's your spoon. <laughs> I'm, God, here, my here, favorite because they your, always give you a spoon for your uh, milkshake. They give you no. a straw. It's like, what the fuck are you gonna do with why this? Are you, why are you giving me a spoon and a straw? You know I'm gonna scoop this up with my hush puppies like a raccoon. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> when it comes to milkshakes, though, I can't do. It's interesting you said like the Reese's Pieces because mm-hmm. I. I don't like shelled candy mm. in that. Oh, I, if yeah, there's so, something that the that, cups are better, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd rather have like um, a, a, a peanut butter cup, but but still, I I don't want a hole. Yeah, and if I have something like kind of chunky and crunchy, I want it to be able to like. Uh, uh, Zog up, yeah, a little bit. So I, I did misspeak. Uh, I, I, I meant the Reese's cups, not the okay. pieces. So yeah, I'm the same way. Do they have Reese's pieces? I think they I think have they cups. do. I'm not sure. I know. Oh. They have, I know they have M and M's, which are candy yeah. coated, so they get that similar experience. Mm. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, like the the caramel fudge. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, I, but I can't mix anything with it. I feel like it's it's so good on its own, and anything else would kind of throw off the juju with it. So yeah. So for the longest time, I only got basic Hershey's chocolate milkshakes. Huh. For the longest mm-hmm. time, I got the basic one. It's yeah. a really good chocolate milkshake. Yeah. Um, and Brittany used to hassle me about it, and every now and then I'll still just get a chocolate because milkshake. Every single time I went to cook out, he would only get the chocolate milkshake, and it just seemed so weird because there was like all these different flavors, and he's just like, "Oh, the chocolate." I just, just the chocolate, do they mix please. in like the syrup with it? Yeah, oh. it's, it's just vanilla. It's a vanilla uh, milkshake with Hershey's chocolate syrup in it, and it's so good. Oh hell yeah! It's really. Really, really, really fucking basic, and I don't care, dude. No, that sounds that sounds heavenly. Hell yeah! My favorite basic milkshake as a kid was just like a peach milkshake. So yeah, um, I don't like the flavor peach, but any like of the their like fruit flavors are really pretty good. good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the watermelon one is actually a lot mm-hmm. like the peach one, but you can get the peach one year round. Hell uh, yeah. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. The only other thing that I get there on the regular that isn't milkshake is a milkshake ish <laughs> is I'll get their Coke float, and they also have cheer wine floats mm, there. I do get the cheer wine float mm. a lot, and those like it's, it's a classic little drink. Like it's nothing special, but I, I'll get those instead of milkshake every now. And I then. might try that one time. It's a little lighter. I don't usually like cheer wine, but cheer, I don't know. Cheer wine floats good. You, know, you, you can know. ask them for Mountain Dew. <laughs> They'll do it. I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> Do you guys know that you could get uh, just a slice of cheesecake from Cookout, too? Yeah, so yeah. That's how I know that they just put a slice of cheesecake in your milkshake yeah. and blend it up like we were talking about. I think, yeah, just, I, I, think <laughs> I have le- legit just ordered a slice of strawberry cheesecake mm-hmm. from there. It's, it's really good. It is good. Uh, putting cheesecake with your other things is you, the fact that you can put cheesecake in, in a milkshake is a fucking crime. And I yeah. love it. Mm hmm. You, you said it is a crime. Yeah, it's a you, fucking crime that you can do this. Yeah. This shouldn't be. No one should be allowed to do. But this. that's what? the crime you want to but do next year. Is, that's it. There we go. This is America. 
and here we eat cheesecake with everything. Yeah. I find it really interesting that three, uh, three out of four of us, uh, our base ice uh, milkshake is Oreo. Mm. Yeah. I've always wanted to do an Oreo cheesecake. It's good. Milkshake. I've done it. It's good. Um, yeah, it sounds good. Or uh, for me, it's just like the Oreo itself uh, <laughs> gets that sog factor mm-hmm. really, really quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a great base <clears throat> for just about yeah. anything else. You need that like soft. It's like a soft crunch. Yeah. yeah. Soft crunch. Yeah. It's a soft crunch. Oreos it's in like general soft are rock. Great, It's like Michael Bolton. <laughs> it's a Michael Bolton version of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Oreo, so we tried the, the mystery Oreo yeah. the flavor before. So they unveiled what that flavor is. What is it? It's churro. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a very cinnamon fl- Yeah, flavor. Somebody yeah. said Pretty that good. it was fish. I want to know how they got fish out of. What the fuck? Churro? Are they smoking they when they said know that? How to translate words. <laughs> Um, it, it, it reminded me of like the, um, t- like, uh, cinnamon, like Teddy Grahams or like, you know, mm-hmm. like graham cracker. Like it was in that you sort mean of flavor. Rumchata? Tedward Grahams? Ru- yes. <laughs> Tedward Grahams. <laughs> the- Theodore Grahams. Theodore Graham. <laughs> I'm sure that's a person. Um, what, what is your, what, is, so we've got some time left. What is your cookout tray of choice? Um, I will either get a burger with just cheese. Um, and then I'll do like a corn dog and chicken nuggets. Nice. Uh, and then if I want chicken tenders, I'll do, uh, onion rings instead and still do the, uh, the corn dog. Nice. I fucking love corn dogs. Mm-hmm. They Sometimes get, I go there and just get the corn dog tray. got really good ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the burger, either cheddar style or, uh, out West style. Um, and then, depending on my mood, I'll do onion rings or Cajun fries um, and hush puppies. Nice. With a milkshake, as previously stated, to scoop the milkshake with the hush puppies. Um, but occasionally I'll do the fried chicken wrap, the honey mustard one, because that's also fucking dank. Nice choice. Um, I... <clears throat> Most of the time, I'll get a barbecue tray. I'll get the, um, you know, just the mush pulled pork barbecue one. Mm-hmm. Uh, no slaw. I don't like the slaw on it because slaw is terrible. Agreed. Um, and then I'll get either chicken nuggets and a corn dog. Or if I want some carbs, some extra carbs, I'll get the uh, Cajun fries and a corn dog. And sometimes I say, fuck it, I get uh, chicken nuggets and a corn dog, and I'll just get an extra order of fries. Mm. And for real, though, if you've never been to a cookout, you have missed out on your life. Yeah. So, cookout is fantastic. That being said, a lot of uh, locals build it up, and it's not yeah. that it's it's not that it's not amazing. It's amazing that it's always open, just yeah. about. It's insanely affordable. Yeah. And you get and a, you lot, get a of lot of really cheap. good food for it. So at like 2 a.m., you're like, I'm fucking starving mm-hmm. for like a burger. You can go to cookout yeah. and get it. And the main great. one next to us is open until 4.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And they o- open back up at like 10 a.m. 10, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. So um, um, that's what's really great about cookout. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as long as it's not near a college campus because then you'll never get into it unless you're waiting for like an hour. You're yeah. willing to wait. Yeah. Um. So, uh, my tray, I usually always get the ch- chicken strips. Okay. I, I love chicken strips. There's chicken strips. Um, but I also will like their, um, their double burger cheddar style. Yeah, hold those good. onions. Um, uh, but my s- sides of choice would be Cajun fries, um, corn dog, and sometimes hush puppies. Depends. Mm, those so. hush puppies are really good. Yeah. There's a, another cookout tray that I like to get, which is two corn dogs as my main. Mm hmm. And then a corn dog is my side twice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just give me four yeah. corn dogs. Because that's uh, cookout is so fucking insane. Yeah. That is a perfectly reasonable meal that will not be scoffed at by the wait Some, staff. Someone yeah. will fucking make it for you. That yeah, won't even say anything. Want four oh. hot four corn dogs in a styrofoam container. Can be Here yours. you are, you raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for cookout. Please uh, send the check to uh, this address. <laughs> right, we'll be back for in a minute for the next segment. Bye. 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 Tomorrow.
Tomorrow. Not in a minute. Well, it might be tomorrow. It could it be in be, a minute. Or it, could it could be, be tomorrow. It doesn't matter. We figuring out our distribution Ow. process. I mean, they're both happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we cut it. No. See you soon or tomorrow. <laughs> Do you want to watch Heat Wave before anyone else? Well, there's an easy way to do that. Just back us up on Patreon at patreon.com slash half empty tank and be the first to watch the episodes. And and we're back with my my topic. We're talking about myself now. It's all me. I just want you to roll off the couch. It's all me. <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> I'm Bri- Brian's uh, doing the podcast from his butt now. <laughs> <laughs> this Fuck. is... This is our uh, Ace Ventura pet detective. That's right. That's right. Appreciation podcast where Brian talks out of his ass. All right. So we're at the beginning of 2020. But in 2019 just ended. What was your favorite game from the last decade? Top three favorite games from the last decade. Uh, Goldeneye. Goldeneye. That, 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 that does. I mean, uh, which one? There's one that, that does work. work. Because everyone still thinks There's that. A- that game Last was decade was yeah yeah. Uh, 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 Twenty uh, years ago it was nineteen eighty. <laughs> that was a weird <laughs> silence. That was just a weird. It was very uncomfortable. But I was like, hey, I don't really believe that guy, so I'm just making a joke. Like, nice. Everyone was looking at me like, <laughs> actually, it's nineteen ninety. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brittany. Give us your number three choice. My number three. Oh, uh, oh, there have to be an order. No, but oh, do, um, do you want us to all give our all three of them? <clears throat> yeah, sure, Brittany. Give us your top three. Okay, my top three. Um, Breath of the Wild. Of course. Um, I played that game so much. I hundred percented that game recently. Actually, like a couple months ago, I guess now. I found every Korok seed <clears throat> and got that big golden pile of shit, and it was completely worth it i want to play it again <laughs> uh the next one is bioshock infinite okay because nice. i love the bioshock franchise and infinite was really awesome i i liked all the games i even liked the second one um but i didn't make it onto my list but the third one definitely <clears throat> was really awesome and then this one was really hard to choose between um two different games that are pretty similar um but i had to go with stardew valley mm-hmm as my third one, um, I have invested so much time into that game. Pretty much bought that game on every system that there is available to buy it on. Yeah. Um, just played so much of it. So those are my top three. Do you want me to do my honorable mentions or later? No, let's do honorable mentions in a bit. I, but let's talk about like some of those games, though. Because uh, one of the ones that I was going to put on my list, but I'm just trying to not... C- I know that <clears throat> Breath of the Wild was going to be on your yeah. list. Fourth... <clears throat> Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite game of the last uh, decade. Yeah. Because uh, we we all lived together, uh, except Jairus, uh, when, <laughs> <laughs> when the game came out. And we had this really... We only had one Switch, too. Well, between me and you. Yeah. Hutch had one as well. And we just spent so much time like, hey, have you checked out this area yet? Because mm-hmm. I remember Brittany was like, I went to a place that was complete darkness. I was like, where the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really cool because it was just, it wasn't lineal, so you could go wherever you wanted to. And so everyone went in different directions. And I just remember that was probably like one of the first times that I played a new game and just felt really excited because... I just was like, wow, this is a whole new world that I get to explore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, like, I feel like part of my reasoning for playing that game constantly is trying to get that feeling again, mm. but which I'll never get again because now I know it like the back of my hand and it's not as like, it's not like discovering something new anymore. Yeah. But mm. I love that feeling. <clears throat> and I, a lot of people have suggested <clears throat> other open world games to me, but the, what was so appealing about Breath of the Wild was that I was already familiar with the Zelda universe, and a lot of the stuff was mm. it was new, but also felt familiar. Mm-hmm. And aesthetically, it was just really pretty. Yeah. Because, um, like, some people have told me, like, you should play Skyrim. But they told me that, like, years after Skyrim had been out, and it's not, like, it's not as pretty as Breath of the Wild. So I couldn't really get into it. So... 
Well, what about uh, the other one that I think you and I have a lot in common on is probably Stardew Valley. Mm -hmm. So Stardew Valley, I've got about uh, I've got about four hundred hours into that game. Mm -hmm. It's definitely up there for me. <laughs> yeah, I probably have about that, probably around that area as um, well. I don't Not think that, that either. Did you guys ever put any that time into? No, any never played it. I, I never really played Stardew Valley. Okay, um, I've watched you two play it <clears throat> a bit, um, but. The Animal Crossing Stardew Valley, mm. it's not really a thing mm -hmm. that uh, draws me in. Okay. I understand that it's a very relaxing game, um, but I think about a farming simulator, mm. and part of it stresses me out in a weird <laughs> way. So, yeah, I think it's one way or the other. It's either, uh, for me, it's relaxing because I feel like, say, like... Your life's not going the way you want it to yeah. right now and whatnot. It's a, it's a point of control. Let's imagine. Yeah. That our lives aren't going the way that we want yeah, them Yeah, 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 yeah. Just for fun. And uh, I think not when the game real. came out, Brittany and I were very much in yeah. that situation. Yeah. Uh, and we were just like, I can control this. Mm -hmm. I can make mm -hmm. this like nice yeah and that was a very <clears throat> rewarding and therapeutic game for me because of that my brain gave me the good chemicals for playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for me my uh my life isn't going the way that i want it to um i need to feel like i have control over it is actually one of my top three games yeah. and it's Saints Row 4. <laughs> that game is amazing! Yeah. Perfect. Because it, 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 much like Breath of the Wild, like kind of took me aback with um, how much fun it was. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's it's a, a schlocky kind of parody of, you know, Grand Theft Auto and Mass Effect and all of that. And it's just a shit pile of fun. It is absurd and you can jump a mile in the air and then punch a car yeah. um because it's got the all the crackdown mechanics mm -hmm. and it's just a wonderfully absurd nonsense time i that game has a lot of uh, extra meaning to me too because that was around the time when uh us us four as a group <clears throat> started streaming yeah and you actually were streaming yeah. that game quite a bit when you were losing your like eyesight at one yeah. point you had to wear an eye patch while you're streaming one mm -hmm. time and we, that was when we were playing Crackdown. No, no, we were playing Saints Row 4. Oh. Because I remember us uh, right after that with you having the eye patch on singing I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was definitely that game. Because <laughs> that game ends and begins so magnificently. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's a perfect bit of fun. And that was that was at a time where I was thinking about, like, games getting too serious or i was trying to think too seriously about mm -hmm. games and then i played saints row and i was like oh no yeah i can still oh, have yeah, fun games are still fun games like are... you can still just do something goofy and silly and have yeah. fun that's how i feel about crackdown because i've not played saint the saints row games i played a little mm -hmm. bit of three but i didn't get too far into mm -hmm. it um but yeah it gives you that kind of power fantasy and it, like you know you can just like jump across buildings and just yeah. you know start destroying all sorts of shit and, and the, you got the little like um the the orbs the mm -hmm. um the collect-a-thon sort of thing. So, I always like that. Saints Row 4 is the best sequel to Crackdown still. Yeah. Compar even compared to 3. And it's also yeah. the best Grand Theft Auto game. I oh. agree with that, too. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, it is absolutely one of the best ones. The, uh, what's the other two uh, games you got on your list, man? <clears throat> Big surprise. Uh-oh. Deus Ex Human Revolution. <laughs> Um, did you know that game has one of the best soundtracks of all time <laughs> i do and, well so in, in deus ex like those games i have a deep fondness for um because i like cyberpunk i like interesting uh takes on on humanity and post-humanity but also that game played a huge role in brian and i becoming good friends yeah it did um because, like, Brian and I like polar opposite games. Mm. Um, he likes rhythm games. I fucking hate rhythm games. I like first-person shooters. He hates first-person shooters. Yeah, that's my least... We, we generally have, like, exact opposites as far as tastes go. Yeah. I think, though, one of the things that we bonded over was... Uh, and this is le uh, less uh, Deus Ex, but we added this to Deus Ex, was Ridiculousness. Yeah. 
And we started a dumb podcast years ago called uh, Destroy This Podcast. And in that podcast, we all refused to talk about Deus Ex without mentioning that it is the, has the best soundtrack of all time. To this day, I still don't know what that game's about. But I know that it has the best soundtrack of all time. Like, if someone came up to me on the stream and was like, what do you know about Deus Ex? I'd be like, it has the best soundtrack of all time. That's like what I would say legitimately. So, so uh, even though the game is, I, in my opinion, I don't think it's a ridiculous game at all. Even no. though you could kind of, you could kind yeah. of twist that we, into we it. We built a shared fiction about yeah. the game and and the absurdity there. And I love that game. Yeah, I've played like a quarter of it. And I still love that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then my third one uh, is Bastion, in part yes. because Bastion. Like I knew nothing about Supergiant games, and then. <laughs> Was exposed to Bastion, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm all in now." Yeah, um, that was one of my honorable mentions. Was yeah. Bastion. Bastion is uh, definitely on that. I have a game from that time period that is around then. Bastion is absolutely one of the best indie th- games, though, from that time period. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's got great music. The, the action's yeah. fantastic, and I love the narration. Like narrations, yeah. guys, love it. I got to see an orchestra do Bastion transistor music recently, oh, and man. it was one of the best experiences. Oh wow! So Bastion I'm was really the jealous first, of that. Was yeah. the first video game soundtrack that I just listened to, just like in the car. Yeah. <laughs> like that was my turning point of where I can listen to video game music when I'm not playing a video game. Yeah. So that was the first time. There's some, just some great that. songs yeah, in it. Yeah, it's really well, good. And there's something to be said about because, like, most video game soundtracks are like, here's the da 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 da, and like, and that you, sound is pleasing, and I like it, but I wouldn't listen to it like <laughs> exactly while I'm jogging or in the car. Or whatever, it's you know? me, yeah, me and Hutch are bopping to that right now. <laughs> but these two nerds are right but it's, here. Yeah, like like the kind of diegetic, it it plays a role in the game music. <laughs> isn't as listenable as oh when removed from the context of this game this is a good song yeah mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this like maintains as a good song even if you're not playing the game mm-hmm. there's a quite a few of those though Darren Norb uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, for all of the soundtracks and yeah. music that they've made in that but one of my favorite things that to consider is that super giant games hired him full time and they had like five employees yeah but they realized how important audio was yeah not just the game not just the soundtrack yeah. but like the actual like he, there's so much more to it and right. uh th- the sound design of that game is mwah. yeah <laughs> that's, that's interesting kiss. like you've got a Chef's you've got kiss, four yeah. people kiss. in a studio mm-hmm. who's the fifth guy you hire yeah and making the choice of uh music boy yeah yeah, uh, you, you get more soul, I would think. You know, you're working with, you know, your the game's directors and vision, you know, you build that from the ground up. And, mm-hmm. and you know, obviously it shows in this game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hutch, how about you? What are your top three games to 2010s? Uh, so, um, my first one is Metal Gear Solid Five. <sighs> okay, I got to take that one off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm taking it. Go ahead. No, I'm with you, though. Um, so... That game was just like flat out fun. Like all the shit that you can do, uh, the day night cycle. Uh, I don't know why I just mentioned that as a perk. I, I, but, I, like, I, I, actually, <laughs> I actually kind of robbed you of that game. So you sure did when we <laughs> when we were living with you. Uh, I didn't even own an Xbox One. I was, and he got the game. He were playing some other game, and I was like, "Well, hey, I'm gonna try this out." I just wanted to see the beginning. You were at the house. You watched yeah. me start the game, and we watched. We played the first like couple hours of the game together, and then I was like, "Oh, that was fun." And then I'm gonna Hutch play. went to sleep. And then Hutch went to sleep, and then four weeks later, <laughs> I stopped. Finally, stopped playing the game for a little bit for Hutch to have a chance to play it. You stopped airlifting goats. Oh, yeah. I was airlifting a lot of shit. <laughs> it was real fun watching you, like, just, like, um, uh, build up as kind of like, you know, you're taking out people, mm-hmm. like, headshotting mm-hmm. with a, a sleeper sniper, and then just lifting them up on a balloon back to the base. <laughs> yeah. And just, you're basically kidnapping all these yeah. mercenaries. It's just hilarious. Yeah, I remember watching, like, Brian start to play the first bit, and then I left, and I came back, like, a week or two later, and it the game had fully evolved into... <laughs> 
And I was like, okay, I've missed a thing in the evolution of this gameplay. That game has the perfect like cycle of like base building, but the but the process of the missions of process of building your base was also fun. Mm -hmm. The meta game and the actual uh, gameplay of the game worked in tandem in such the perfect way that it was it was very very addictive. Yeah. I did not want to stop playing that game. I beat the game, and then I beat the game again, and then I beat the game to where I got all of the perfect scores on every mission. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I, I, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> I, like, when they started, like, doing missions where you have to redo things, yes. like, that was... I, I, I did the minimum I could to, to get to, uh, was it Mission 61 or whatever, yeah, the yeah, last yeah, yeah. one. So <clears throat> you see the epilogue. Um, you actually were keeping up with the story, though. I was more oh, on yeah. the gameplay. They hide the story through uh, tapes that you have to listen to, <clears throat> you- which, yeah, I think we're good. It was annoying you have to get it through that, but it, it was at least there. Yeah. Um, and it was batshit insane, all of it. <laughs> Hey guys, looks like our camera died. Sorry about that. Uh, so we were checking about Metal Gear Solid V. Uh, yeah, that game, like, you know, a lot of the stories in, in these cassette tapes and uh, it gets really bad shit. Like, um, it's 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 a little bit incomplete because, I mean, it leaves it on a weird cliffhanger. Um, but uh, technically that story exists and it's not official, but it, it's official. I me. loved it. I, yeah. I loved everything about it. You told me about the tapes and I went through it and I dived through that. Yeah. It's uh, absolutely one of my favorite games that came out last. And mm-hmm. last thing I'll say about it is I, I can't remember a game that has made me play from day to night, back into day and then back into night. Mm-hmm. I legit did that a whole weekend <laughs> just playing that fucking wow. game. Yeah. Yeah. You it, got it, two minutes and 50 seconds to get through five games. Oh, no, let's go. <laughs> no, you go ahead and do your last two. Yeah. No, we're, we're probably going to go a little over on this one. So We um, have to bid. Yeah, we game. do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Undertale is mm-hmm. my okay. number two. Um, I really just enjoyed like the music. The music is really awesome in that game. Um, the uh, I really enjoyed the story, the characters, just that whole package. Mm-hmm. Like it. It just like it sucked me in and it made you really care, you know, for the characters and what was going on. It's got a lot of good humor in, in the writing as well. Yeah. So uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, the um, uh, the spare and um, fight, um, you know, battle mechanic, you know, how it kind of gives you the d- diverging paths of how you want your character to play out in the story to ultimately play through. Um I think is great. Like I didn't catch on to it when we were, uh, when I was first playing it. Um, and then when I realized you could spare everyone, I was like, oh, I'm going back and doing that. I'm, I'm playing that game right now. Good. <laughs> Fucking good. <laughs> like that's like the game I'm going through at the moment. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. Like it, it got me, it, not many games like get me emotional, but that game got me emotional mm. at the end. So like, I still need to finish it. Yeah. I've yeah. like half of it. I need to finish it though. Yeah. Um and finally, uh, Splatoon two. Oh Hell shit, yeah. yeah. Um, not Splatoon one. I I would lump the Splatoon one in it as well. So, um, Splatoon. When I first saw it, I thought this game looks fucking dumb. <laughs> and I have never ate so much crow. <laughs> like I I tried. They had a uh, demo when it was on the Wii U, and I played, and I was like. Holy shit! This this is legit fun. Like it was so simple. Like you're just you know painting shit like all over the stage. But no, this works. It works well. Yeah. There's a lot of strategy to it and whatnot. Um, well, and- my, yeah. My favorite part about it too is that like a lot like a lot of like team based shooters now. <laughs> there's multiple ways to play, but that way had like different gameplay ways to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, I was a roller, which felt like a battle platformer. Yeah. Which was great because i hate shooters yeah but i had a way in yeah it was a way for like different people who like different games to play together so mm-hmm. that was pretty cool well and it's it's funny how much you all fell in love with splatoon before you even know, knew that you could become the hot dog queen mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the hot dog queen being hot dog queen was just like the best bonus yeah, yeah. okay yeah fringe the- fringe hot dog benefits i hate being the mayo queen but i'm that too yeah well, concessions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, a big part of it was, you know, getting to play with you guys, uh, playing with friends. Um, 
that was a big social like multiplayer game like mm-hmm. not since like the modern warfare games like yeah, that yeah. have had that sort of effect with me um and the, the Splatfest were really like yeah, great they yeah, brought cool. people back in to you know for one weekend to battle it out so it's really I, fun I, i'm sad that splatoon 2 is got uh, like it's not done done but like the events are done yeah why well, not Time's up, so we don't get to hear what Brian. Yep. My, my 2010 games don't matter. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask, can we get an extra five more minutes? Hutch, would you be okay for another five? I would minutes? be uh, okay. Brittany? No. No? Okay. H- Jairus? You've almost called me Hutch twice. <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> and that's mean, but with that in mind... I will still authorize it, but now we have to Decide. have a conversation mm-hmm. on how we're going <laughs> Is it to unanimously, or just a multi- multiple vote. Just, just tell us your games. Brian. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. All right, all right. So my uh, number one game was Breath of the Wild. Now, uh, I would say that my most surprising game that I played in the 2010s that caught me by storm was Fez. Mm, yeah, Fez, that was one of my honorable mentions. Fez yeah. was absolutely the game that just like made me feel like a kid again. I was actually like drawing down notes. I was avoiding the internet. I was part of like a community of people that were trying to figure out all of the things that were inside that game. Yeah, making a like figuring out what the translating the language that is built yeah. into the game. There was just so much meat on the bone for me to chew into from just the basic most simplest gimmick of like a 2d being in a 3d world yeah that uh and on top of that it it was already like something that i really enjoyed was just like perspective is just something i like to play with yeah so it just came at the perfect time for me i also just needed something to play and i will always remember that like week or so where i just did everything i absolutely could and to this day the final the final uh <clears throat> puzzle has not been properly solved we don't know how to yeah there's still some like unsolved. the black monolith now while we gone into the code and we know what it does to like to put in the input we don't know how to actually get that in the game we've only done it by like code dumping the game so mm. there is still a mystery out there and it's it's one of those things I still like come back to probably about once a year. Mm. I've beaten that game I can't tell you how many times. Like 100%. Uh after that I would have to say Portal 2. Mm. Yeah, Portal good choice. Really good. Portal 2 was a was one of the most unlikely games for me i didn't think anything would ever outdo portal one portal yeah. one was just mm-hmm. a pristine perfect little tiny bite-sized experience yeah and there's just no way they were going to build on that and make it not like there wasn't going to be a downside to it but as i was progressing more and more through portal Getting 2 all that good cave johnson story <laughs> holy shit it was so good of course they got the perfect actor for yeah. that yeah um Somehow they had two good songs at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, just one of those things that I just, I go back to every now and then. And oddly enough, I still, me and you still so play the co-ops. So it's funny, but you hassled me to like hurry up and play it. And like I was playing it and you were like, oh, just finish it, just finish it. Because you wanted to play the co-op. And it's like, how many years it's like nine years later. Yeah, we, we still, still have not played it. the co-op. So <laughs> like, I, have like I have, to play I have it never again. even played co-op. I haven't oh, looked shit. at yeah, it. Me and Brittany have still got to put yeah, that's still on our to-do co-op. list. So wow. we still have to do I've that. I've only played the story. So um me and Brittany, we sh- we really need to yeah, do, we that. Should do that. Get to it. <laughs> we just make a weekend and just do it. And then my last game is I'm not sure if this is a cop out or not, but it's Pokemon Go. No. I think Pokemon Go Pokemon was, Go was one of the most entertaining, weirdest experiences of my yeah. life I still with a play, video game. I still play it a little bit, too. Yeah. But, like, when that game came out, the world collectively got wholesome all of a sudden. And we just walked around and went outside. And you could just tell that person's yeah. playing Pokemon Go. And people mm-hmm. just walked up to each other and talked to each other. Yeah, it was really cool. It was... One of the weirdest experiences of, like, not just video games, but of my life, of just being able to talk to anyone on the street and have some type of thing to talk about. Yeah. And I don't think I will ever have a video game experience <laughs> like that again. Well, it was interesting 
I should lean back into the microphone. You're fine. <laughs> um, it was interesting to watch that. Like, I played Pokemon Go a little bit, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't get into it to that degree. Okay. But it also seemed like it was fucking everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. everyone cared about it, even people who don't play video games. Yeah. Yeah, my mom plays it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was my, it was my first Pokemon game, technically. Technically. Well, I played Red. Yeah. It popped as Pokemon Cherry. <laughs> We've had enough Pokemon Cherry popping this episode. <laughs> cherry popping Pokey cherry Daddies. Po- <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, like, that game, I've never, like, driven around, like, the cemetery that's next to, next to my house. <laughs> Until that game. Until that fucking we game came out. I was like, oh, we would drive night. around that cemetery. Oh, and there'd be, like, rows of cars just going in a circle around the cemetery getting all the poke stops in the middle of the night <laughs> it was it was they, one of my favorite unfortunately games. they changed that though because mm-hmm. i guess like certain businesses and, and places can request that their stops get taken down and i'm sure the people at the cemetery were like we can't have all these fucking kids I sp- in the cemetery <laughs> they have a few gyms there now but it's not like how it used to be i spent my entire lunch break playing that game and when i was working at soccer.com i would just drive around this like two blocks in downtown hillsboro just, just getting pokey stops, stops and like getting gems so whatnot. one of my honorable mentions like everyone's mentioned them except for this one it was also a like a mobile game it was monument valley oh okay. that's a great one yeah, yeah i love monument valley and i really wanted to come to a console and i want to buy all the merch for it i'm Ooh. actually really surprised you didn't mention papers please I thought about it, but there's so many games though. It's really hard. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is another one. New Leaf. Mm-hmm. Um, that one, like I f- like that one was a toss up between Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. But I felt like the year that we spent playing it kind of like destroyed it. Not destroyed it, but definitely diminished it a little bit. Like I yeah. still love the game, but I'm looking forward to the new one. So yeah. I have a new thing to love versus like new yeah. Leaf, so for me, I guess my we have over- breached the time allotment. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> Dark Souls. We have, That's why we have rules for a fucking <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this <laughs> crazy episode. Sorry about the camera break. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next week with another episode of Heat Wave. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you then. Sports. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, up a button. Like a bus, bro. <laughs> Do you like coming subscribe? Come subscribe, bird.